Hey guys, so starting off from where we left last time, uh, if you remember, we were just uh, talking about services and essentially why you should disable the ones that you don't need. So we're going to keep going from a networking point of view for uh, for this video at the very least and keep talking a bit about ports and also about uh, kind of how to stop your machine from being exposed to the network. And I think that this is one of the first thing aspects of, uh, I would say, host security anyway. And uh, in order to see an alternative to to closing ports, because again, there are situations where you can't simply close ports, say if you're in a production environment, you will have to open that SSH port and you will have to open that maybe HTTP port uh, if you are using a web server or something on your machine. So this is the this is kind of the motivation for using something which kind of gives you access control, if you will, to your machine. And it, one way, to, one of the ways anyway, to enforce access control is uh, by using firewalls. Now, if you don't know what a firewall is, you can imagine a firewall as being like um, something that captures all the traffic that goes in and out of your machine. And then it compares that traffic to, let us say, a bunch of rules. And uh, if the traffic matches a certain rule that you specified previously, then it's going to either drop it or accept it. And if it drops it, again, the, the request is simply never going to reach your machine or never leave it for that matter. And in order to implement a simple firewall such as this, uh, on Linux, what you would usually do is you would install IP tables. IP tables is actually always installed on most Linux distributions. So we can just take a look at what it looks like. And uh, the first way to understand IP tables is to take a look at some sample configurations because I think, uh, oops, because I think that uh, again, it's more it's more like um, more not realistic, but more interesting to look at, the, at it this way anyway. So I'm in the Etsy IP tables, and this usually comes with two uh, kind of uh, sample configuration files. So notice that the empty rule set is just a configuration file, and what it does it is it specifies three what we call chains. And these chains are kind of like the direction that the packets come in. So for example, the input chain is the chain that get, that gets to process all the packets that come in. The output conversely is the one that uh, again deals with the packets going out. And the forward one is the chain that manages kind of the packets that go into your machine, but they are not destined to your machine. So kind of as if your machine was said to be used as a router, for example. And the simple rule set does not specify anything other than that, and it, uh, but it does tell that uh, we have an accept policy. And uh, the policy on IP tables, it's applied to each one of these, uh, to each one of these uh, kind of chains independently. And what it does is essentially de specifies the default behavior. So if we had a bunch of rules uh, declared after that, what would happen is that packets would be compared to those rules. And if they did not match any of the rules, the default behavior would be to accept in this case. So it would not drop anything. And this is all well and good for an empty configuration, but this does not really do anything. So in order to see something more complex, I'm going to open the simple firewall rules. And notice that it has a, a few things, a few extra things anyway. Notice that we also have all of our three chains. These are the usual ones you're going to find, but we also have uh, changed the policies. So notice that for input, the, the policy, the default is going to be to draw packets unless they meet the rules that we specified below. And on the forward, you can notice that we did set it to drop as well, but we later did not append any any kind of rule to this chain, which means that every forwarded traffic is going to be dropped. And this is usually what you want. You really don't want your machine to be acting, say, as a router. So this is the first thing. And uh, just to look at those rules. So again, the, the syntax for adding them is usually like this. If you were doing it on the CLI, this would be the same thing. So in order to deal with IP tables, you use the IP tables command, and you use a dash A flag in order to set uh, it to append which means that it's going to add a new rule at the bottom of the rule set for your given for your given chain. So in this case, I can specify a chain such as input. And uh, the dash P, I'm going to take the first one here as an example. So the dash P, what it does is it specifies a protocol. In this case, the protocol is ICMP. And if you know your networking, you know that ICMP deals kind of with echo requests, the famous pings. So, it's something that you can use also for network management for dealing with, uh, say, if you can't, get, if you, if your router 
wants to warn you that you, it does not know the route to a host, it's going to do that by using also an ICMP type message. So if we wanted, say, to make it in such a way using IP tables that, for example, I'm in a network and other people cannot ping me, so they cannot send me an ICMP type message, the, the dumb way would be to simply disable ICMP altogether. And I'm going to show what it looks like just so that you guys have an idea. So if I give a, a kind of a rule like this, I'm going to say that the action is reject for ICMP. And I'm, I'm going to do this very briefly just to show you. So I'm going to go to my host also. Let me open up a terminal. And I'm going to ping 192.168.1.103, which is the address for my kind of my virtual machine. I'm going to let the ping go and I'm going to activate that rule. So if I do something like this, notice that now I receive a destination port on reach because now my machine cannot, can no longer ping. Essentially my virtual machine is not responding because of the firewall rule. Uh, essentially all the ICMP type traffic is going to be dropped. So I'm going to, f uh, you can also remove all the kind of all the rules that you set by using the dash F. And if you want to see which rules are there, you can just uh, use the uppercase L flag. And notice that we see that I added this reject one for ICMP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flush all these rules. And uh, then my IP tables is empty once again. So this is kind of the logic that you would apply. So uh, there is, it's a very complicated thing to deal with. Uh, these are the basics again, so you have to know that you can append rules. And again, the type of rule that you want is going to depend on what you have on your machine. So you, if you are in a server, for example, you have to know which are the IP addresses that you're going to allow to access your web, your web service or your, or your SSH service. So again, this is something that you have to adjust to your needs. But if you are, let's say, on a home a home user uh, using this on top of a desktop maybe and you just want people not to be able to uh, ping you and send you TCP requests. Notice that you can drop TCP. This is what drops essentially kind of TCP connections that have not been initiated by your machine. Uh, so this will not drop the, say if you try to begin a, a, an HTTP connection to a, to a foreign machine, to a server, for example, you still can. Uh, and this is what this is the rule that allows that it's going to check if you are receiving say connections that are already established so that you have already begun and if it is that a packet that you received is coming from an open session then it's going to allow it because it's assuming that you begin it and it's assuming that uh, it's a legitimate thing and uh, you can kind of manipulate this if you will if you obviously you have to understand a bit of networking but uh, again the basics are there and if you want to use this as your configuration, what you would usually do is you can use the IP tables restore. So this is what uh, reads essentially IP tables rules from a given file. And I'm going to give it this one file, which is the etsy IP tables. In this case, the simple firewall rules. You also have to sudo it. And uh, normally this should be good. So if I do an IP tables, IP tables, uh, uppercase L. Notice that I have all my rules loaded in. So this should already be a good start, I would say. And again, if you want more details, you can always read the doc. But uh, essentially, this is how you would deal with uh, with making a configuration file and also with loading it in memory. And uh, one last thing, if you uh, what you're going to notice is that you have to reload the um, kind of your uh, kind of your configuration file every time you reboot your machine, so it does not get loaded permanently. The IP tables restore is not going to restore it forever. So what you can do in that case is if you want your rules to be loaded every time that you kind of start up your machine, you're going to go to the you can go anyway to the rc.local. And uh, this is going to run essentially the commands to, uh, to after you hit stage two, essentially after your networking is set up. So uh, you can just again edit this file. I do need to sudo it first. And then you can add your command. So IP tables restore. And then you give the full path. So at C, IP tables, and then simple firewall 
dot rules. And this should be a good beginning again. Uh, you can always edit the rules to your wish and there are usually pretty good samples on the internet. I'm going to most likely put on the description some links to some good firewall rules, but this one should be enough to get you started. So this should be it. And thank you very much, guys. See you next time.